Hey guys, Forex here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the now fully working Amstrad CPC 464. Now in this video, what I want to do is like I did with the Spectrum Plus 2 and the Commodore 64 tape deck, I want to service the tape deck inside this thing. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now to get in this beast, <laughs> look how long it is, uh, there's six screws you need to remove. There's one here, 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 and the final one is here. If you remove those screws, I'll flip this over and then show you how you get inside. Now to get in this thing, what you do is you grab it near the tape deck and you open it like a clam so you grab it like this and you lift it up now the first thing you'll see just here there is this connector that plugs into the motherboard just here just unplug that then what you want to do is swing it open and you'll see a connector here now depending on your revision um, you'll either have a membrane keyboard or like this one uh, which is a ribbon uh, connection now if it's a membrane it should plug into two connectors on the board just unplug it a bit like the spectrum just be very careful when you do it because these are getting old now now this one has a connector just there that i need to unplug uh, and that's it that will be the top case that will come off to get the tape mechanism out first i have to remove the keyboard now you may be asking why is that well the power uh, LED is under the keyboard and it's connected to the actual tape mechanism so yeah what I need to do is remove the keyboard so I need to remove this screw here this screw this screw this screw uh, and this screw and then the keyboard should just pop straight out now to get the whole of the tape mechanism out there's a, a number of screws I need to remove first I need to remove the power switch so there's a screw just here and there's a screw just here then I need to remove the volume knob and there's a screw there and a screw there and then finally I can start taking out the actual tape mechanism and there's a screw here there's a screw here there's a screw just down in this hole just down here you may not be able to see it there's a screw here and the final screw is here remove those and then I'll be able to take out the actual tape mechanism and that's the tape mechanism removed uh, now what I want to do first is remove the function keys uh, now to do that I need to take care of this e-clip just here if I take that off I'll then be able to pull this bar through this side and then I'll be able to take out the actual function keys so I'll go ahead and do that uh, and then come back and there's the function keys just soaking in my wash basin I'll leave them for half an hour come back and then give them a scrub that's the function keys removed uh, what I want to do now is start cleaning this mechanism now to do that you need a soft bristle brush you don't want to be using something like a, a toothbrush because uh, you can start uh, cleaning things you'll knock a spring off and then it's good times trying to find the spring and trying to put it back where it was <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to start off with a soft bristle brush uh, and you just go along like this you know you get inside everywhere um, and you just keep doing this on the front and on the back um, you just do that for five minutes getting everywhere like that so yeah I'll do this uh, for the front and the back uh, and then I'll come back so finished that's all the surface dust off uh, what I'm going to do now is take a, a q-tip and I'm going to put a bit of alcohol on it isopropyl alcohol and now I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to go around the mechanism and give it a really really good clean so I'll go ahead and do that and then when I've done I'll come back And that's the mechanism all cleaned. Uh, surprisingly, uh, it wasn't really that dirty. Um, I removed a few rust spots. Hopefully you can see those there. 
it's got my fiberglass pen on there and just uh, run it over there lightly and got rid of it um, now when this was in operation um, I noticed after about a minute or two um, it started to struggle um, loading the games and it didn't affect the load the load was fine but you could hear it wobbling it was like instead of a nice tone ee, it was going ee, 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 like that. and that normally happens when this wheel starts to slip on this wheel because if I press the play button you'll see what happens look can you see how that that wheel there let me just see if I can get it there you can see this wheel engages with this one and and if there's not enough tension on this wheel um, when it's pulling the tape like this uh, it starts to slip um, and that's what causes the like that. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can retension this wheel just here now if we look at the back of the mechanism we can see a spring just here now when you press play this spring pulls that wheel onto that drive wheel that pulls the tape uh, now when this spring starts to slacken that's when the wheel starts to slip so what you need to do is you need to take this spring off and all you do is you just move it up by a couple of turns uh, so I'll go ahead and do that and then show you what it looks like once I've done now hopefully you can see that now all I did was just pull it forward a bit and I just moved it up by a couple of turns and that's retentioned that wheel so it should stop slipping now what I want to do now is remove the two belts and replace them I've got some new ones uh, now the first one that needs to come off uh, is the one that is used to drive the counter wheel uh, it's very easy you just do that pull it and then you can grab it from the back side and it's been a pain you stick a wonder <laughs> come on there you go <laughs> uh, and the second one uh, is on the opposite side um, but I'm gonna have to do some dismantling uh, to get that off uh, and I'll show you how I replace it that's both screws removed I can lift this up now move it out of the way like that just grab the old belt pull it off and that's the old bolt belt removed what I'll do is I'll install the new belt it's just a reverse uh, and then come back and that's the new belt fitted I'll just turn it over and fit the counter belt now what I want to do now is give this thing a good lubrication now to do that I'm going to be using this gear grease uh, this is the stuff I use and uh, I'm just going to spend five minutes going around uh, giving it a good lubrication now like I said in my other videos if you're stuck to wonder what to lubricate what you can do is if you push the capstan wheel like this you can see uh, the mechanisms that move um, and they're the ones that you need uh, to lubricate so yeah I'm just going to spend 10 minutes doing that and then when I've done that I'll come back and that's a tape mechanism all serviced now before I put it back in the CPC uh, there's a few things I want to do the first I want to clean the erase head the play record head the capstan and the capstan pinch wheel with a little bit of IPA so I'll get it and do that uh, and then I can get it back in the system now the eagle item on you may notice I've soldered the wire back onto the speaker <laughs> So yeah, I'll get cleaning these with IPA and then we'll put this back in the CPC. What I want to do now um, is show you where I'm going to tap into the audio signal um, so I can calibrate the azimuth. Now if we take a look at the circuit diagram for the Amstrad CPC's tape deck, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in um, a little bit there we go uh, because I want you to look at this area here this area here is the audio amplification side so here's the tape head it gets amplified 
a little bit through this transistor then it goes through this op amp and gets amplified even more then through this op amp and gets amplified even more and then it gets spit out uh, to the connector which goes to the motherboard and then uh, the chip on there actually digitizes the signal um, so yeah what I want you to do is if you look at a ZX Spectrum's schematic what you'll see is you'll see pretty much this is identical uh, inside the ZX Spectrum and when we're calibrating the azimuth for the ZX Spectrum we tap into pin 7 um, of the op amp now if you look at this schematic Amstrad are going through an extra op amp uh, and what they're doing here is they're overdriving the signal now when you overdrive a signal that's called clipping when it comes to audio so they're intentionally clipping the signal um, and when you clip a, an audio signal it looks more like a square wave um, and what I'll do is if I remember I'll show you the output uh, what that looks like when it's clipped um, so I can't tap into here pin 8 um, because the signal is being overdriven but I can tap into pin 7 here uh, and that's where I'm going to tap into to calibrate the azimuth and um, we're all back together now like I showed you what I want to do now is tap into the audio coming out of this thing so I can calibrate the azimuth now if we take a look at the chip here this is the footprint and I'm going to be connecting my probe to pin 7 I can't go on pin 8 because that's being overdriven like I showed you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder a wire to pin 7 I'm going to solder a ground wire and then I can monitor the output uh, and calibrate the azimuth so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back that's my wire soldered on let's get calibrating this azimuth I've said it before and I'll keep on saying it whenever you're calibrating an azimuth you want the tape mechanism to be in its most natural position i.e. inside the system uh, and inside the caddy I'm ready to calibrate the azimuth on this tape deck um, first I need to tell the system to play um, I've got my alignment tape in there I've got the scope probe hooked up to the output monitoring that pin 7 and it's hooked up to my scope uh, so let's press play and let the leading come and then you'll see the uh, 6.3 kilohertz sine wave and there it is oh that's low that needs adjusting I can tell straight away okay let me put my uh, adjustment screwdriver in there okay let's uh, and there you can see look how wide that is now straight away so if I go the opposite way it gets smaller go back keep going back and it gets smaller again go back and it gets bigger again if I keep going that same way it gets smaller again so I'm just hunting for those maximum peaks and I'd say it's about there so yeah you saw that guys that azimuth was out um, but yeah as you can see we got maximum peaks now so this thing should be loading tapes perfectly fine what I've done now is I've hooked up the point to pin 8 which is the output which goes to the output here and what I want to show you is why you can't use that to calibrate the azimuth because what you'll see when I show you on the scope is they're intentionally overdriving the signal basically clipping the signal uh, so it looks more square uh, and if the signal is more square looking it's easier for the system to digitize it so yeah I'll get this back together and then show you the signal same again um, it's already been calibrated so I don't have to adjust the azimuth but what I'm doing now is I'm looking at pin 8 which is the output to the Amstrad CPC main board which then gets digitized and what you'll see is by going through that extra op amp they're clipping the signal to make it into more of a square wave 
uh, which makes it easier for the system to then digitize it so what I'll do is I'll play the tape uh, nothing's changed everything's the same and um, what you'll see is that signal is now clipped and there you go see what I mean about the signal being clipped you can see it, it looks more square uh, and that's why you can't use that to calibrate the azimuth because it's clipped but yeah, that's why they're going through that extra op amp uh, to clip the signal, uh, which then makes it easier to digitize. Because if you zoom out, like that almost looks square, right? <laughs> Obviously your, your leading edge and trailing edge is a bit too big, uh, but you can clean that up pretty easy by going through a Schmidt trigger. Tape deck's been serviced, azimuth has been calibrated. Let's get rid of all the wires, put it all back together and give it a test. And as you can see, we're all back together. So let's start loading a game from tape. Got my favourite and everybody else's favourite, Operation Wolf. Love this game guys. <laughs> I have it pretty much on every single system I have. I love the game back in the day. Um, so yeah, let's... Uh, Start the tape, we'll press play and we'll let it load. And there you go guys as you can see it started to load what I'll do now is I'll let it finish loading and then when it's done I'll come back as I'll show you we're coming towards the end of the screen draw um, as you can see it's the Operation Wolf image that's been loaded so yeah I'll let this go uh, and then when it's finished loading this screen draw I'll um, let the rest of the tape load and there you go it's finished doing it guys so yeah what I'll do now is I'll let this tape go now and then come back once it's loaded did the game load let's have a look of course it did winner winner <laughs> so let's start the game It's actually a, a pretty good port of Operation Wolf. Uh, the one on the Spectrum's atrocious. <laughs> but yeah, this one looks pretty good. So yeah, there you go guys. Uh, that's how I service the data corder in an Amstrad CPC. Hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, or the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. And I'm getting my arse handed to me because I'm not playing. I'm almost dead. Oh no! One more hit. Oh no, I've sustained a lethal injury. Ah! <laughs> catch you next time, guys.